Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are watching me from. Thank you so much and God bless you. And um, I must tell you that I'm emotional doing this video now. Uh, it's not that this has any personal perils as it has to do with me, but I feel so sad that people have big opportunities to gather the kind of crowd and looking at the people physically, you can, you can deduce a hunger for God and hunger for Christ. And this has become a kind of a norm that people will gather crowds, crowd of people, individuals, couples, you know, for a purported Bible discourse. And then you you can see through these people that more than 90% of them, if not 100% of them, don't know anything about Christ. But they have a desire to listen to somebody the respect. And you gather them to teach them practices that are common with pagans and paganism. You gather them to teach them, give them new age knowledge. I feel so emotional. I feel so disturbed. And as much as I know that uh, some persons would think that he is saying the truth and that I'm just looking for attention. Now, but I want you to understand that there, are, there is no so much distance between the truth and heresy. You must always understand this. There is no too much distance. In fact, it's a thin line. There is just a very thin line between the truth and heresy. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, and I read, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than two-edged sword. Now, the word of God is not just two-edged sword. It's even sharper than two-edged sword. And you see, persons have been able to master the act of using the two-edged sword. But there are those that, you know, fail to use it well. They don't know how to use it. It can either kill you or wound you because either way you put it, there is a side or the edge of the blade that is facing you. So, and that is why the word of God is what it is. You cannot manipulate it. You cannot twist it and get free, get away with it, at least in the sight of God. There is, you know, the knowledge and understanding, even by the Spirit of God, when he said, you must not add and you must not subtract. Now, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, let me read that as well. You know, the Bible says there, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. Now, verse 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. Now, anybody that has intent, that is, you know, has the intention of twisting the scriptures, they don't just twist it because they are making mistake. They twist it because that is what they want to do. Now, Apostle Peter here, talking about some of the epistles of Apostle Paul that seem to be hard to understand. And so, some are twisting it to their own destruction. But not just that also, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. So, with this word, you know, I, I lay a foundation of this discussion. And finally, before I allow you to listen to Love You, Elias, I want us to read again in the book of Colossians. Colossians, I want to read Colossians chapter 2 and we read verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. This is KJV. MSB says, Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. So, now, uh, you will have to be patient. And because of certain things, I will have to break intermittently. I know some of you don't like it, but I also understand that a lot of you will just come and watch what Lovey has to tell you and will not want to pay attention to understand what I feel about it. And also, at the end of it, you also compare it with the scriptures, whether what I'm saying are lies or whether I'm just, you know, trying to gain attention. So because of that, I will come in intermittently. Now, we're going to look at what he's teaching about precious stones and 
you know, he talked about the 24 elders in heaven singing the uh, songs of the redeemed about olive oil. You know, how that if you don't make use of these things, you lose your spiritual freedom. Now, his, his subtle approach to matters and what he said about the snake and the true meaning of the symbol because he tried to manipulate it, twist it. The true symbol of the snake on a stake, a medical logo, you know, that we see in hospitals today. So please sit back and relax. Let us travel together in this path. I'll be seeing you in the video. Please give me your patience. Thank you so much and God bless you. You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. There is something very interesting when you read the book of Revelations, I believe chapter 5, it speaks about the 24 elders who are in the presence of God. And the Bible says that the 24 elders sang the song of the redeemed. They sang the song of the redeemed. Now, if you think about it and truly process it, it doesn't make sense because the 24 elders, as far as I know, they are no human beings because the 24 elders existed before the 12 tribes exist. If you read scripture, you realize that these guys have been in heaven for a long time. They are not the 12 disciples and the 12 tribes. They are actually not. And they there is nowhere in the scriptures that says so because these elders have been there as far as time we as far as we know time but they sang the song of the redeemed what were they redeemed so what i'm in, in short i even though i know what is happening there but what i'm going to explain to you is this there's always mysteries behind mystery the devil knows take ownership of what god has done and direct the credit to himself because he will make it about you and if it becomes about you you will easily glorify him an example is when you see crystal and you see all this stone immediately they are credited to Satan now if right now you say I like crystals and you put them in your house somebody will come and tell you that's witchcraft throw it out uh, come on let's can we be honest it's a hundred percent the truth now you tell me when did the devil create a crystal Christians have loved it's like we are so weak-minded in not understanding the purposes of God that we have conceded everything to the devil let me show you something that will surprise you Revelations chapter 21 now before he goes to the revelation 21 where he wants to read uh let us look at this thing properly and um you know looking at it in a way he started by you see i read it i read scriptures to you that and that makes you to understand or should make you to understand that whatever you want to do with the scripture you can do with the scripture now that place he was talking about in revelation chapter 5 now if you read it properly you will understand that it is that is the place from verse 1 of it when there was no body worthy to open this the seal to open the book and to remove the seal and as john was crying he said one of the elders came and tapped him and said come down for the lion of the tribe of judah has prevailed to open the book to remove the seal and to open the book and to read the content thereof and the lamb took the book from off the hand of he that sat on the throne which is the father now that elucidated joy in heaven now the bible said that there were instruments of praise and worship in the hands of the four beasts and the twenty and four elders now and part of the instruments were veils uh, maybe we should just read from verses and i beheld and lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent forth into all the earth and he came and he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne and when he had taken the book the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb having Having every one of them harps and the golden veils full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, the instruments of praise that they had were filled with sweet smelling odors, incense. And the Bible said that was the prayers of the saints. And you see, prayers and praise go together. Now, the prayers of the saints, the praise of the saints, I mind you that they were also having instruments of praise. Now, the you know, the 20 and 4 elders, they are cooked. They are real, you know, uh, beings in heaven. Now, yes, we cannot categorically say who they, who they are. 
who they happen to be whether they are the the you know the 12 tribes of israel whether they are you know some elders you know that god had dealt with in the past and probably their record is not even in the bible we don't know if they are humans or not but he said they are not humans now the bible says in verse in verse 9 and they sung a new song saying that art worthy to take the, the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred now if we're to take the weddings of their song literally as it is now that means that they we are also subjected awaiting the redemption of the you know the, the, the redemptive work of the son of god and so we can now because what they had in their views was the prayers of the saints and they sang a new song so it could also be that this are uh, you know a, a kind of replicating what the saints on earth the condition of the church what the the the, the triumphant you know opening of the seal and he did now so if john was filled with sorrow because there was no one that was worthy to open Open it that means that if no one had opened it there probably was a doom awaiting the sense awaiting the church and so these guys sung the song of the redeemed they, they, they did the song of a, a, a new song praising the lamb that has redeemed us so this has nothing literally to to pointing us to what he wanted to say and what follows because he found it difficult actually to openly say what he said it meant but subtly he linked it to mysteries that he wanted to, he wants to reveal i don't know if i'm making sense right so when they sang the song they they did the song of the redeemed prayers of the saints were in their instruments so also they, they were representing the church before the lord they were representing the church because jesus basically came for the church and his redemption happened to be for the church and the prayers of the saints of god who are the church of christ happens to be in their instruments of praise so those prayers were coming up and the new songs of the, the saints they were rendering so whether they were humans or spirit beings we do not know but what they were talking about happens to be the re redemption that the work of christ did for all the the things that god created every creature of god suffered loss by the reason of the fall of man and when jesus came he restored the original intent of god for the christian now the bible said that the christians are subjected in hope waiting for the the appearing the revelation of the sons of god from verse 17 mama you want to read this revelation 21 from verse 17 revelation 21 from verse 17 to 20 listen to this and he measured the wall thereof mm -hmm. and 140 and four cubits mm -hmm. according to the measure of a man that is of the angel and the building of the wall of it was jasper and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass so you notice there is jasper in heaven there is pure gold in heaven uh-huh keep reading and the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all men of precious stones so the foundations of the seat had all precious stones i keep reading the first foundation was jasper the first foundation was jasper the second sapphire second sapphire the third uh, that name chalcedony uh -huh. the fourth an emerald uh -huh. the fifth sardonyx uh -huh. the sixth sardius uh -huh. the seventh crystal uh -huh. crystal light the eighth barrel the ninth topaz uh -huh. the tenth <laughs> christ uh -huh. yes the eleventh jason uh -huh. the 12th and amethyst now now you think about it like this yeah yeah we're not done but just think about it god is telling you stones that are in heaven yeah are you hearing me god is telling you already oh yeah by the way the foundations of heaven are made of this stone keep going and the 12 gates were 12 pearls 12 every pearls. several mm -hmm. gate was mm -hmm. of one pearl mm -hmm. and the street of the city was pure gold as it were so it means it means in heaven 20, 24 carat meaning it's, it's not saying pure. the gold is is, is is transparent it's saying it is so pure that it's like glass meaning that it is the highest grade of gold you can ever find on earth we get to 24 carat but god is telling you yeah, yeah, yeah in heaven it is the it's so pure you think it's glass it's not saying the gold is transparent because gold is just gold are, are you hearing me now do you think God is foolish to build the foundations of heaven on this stone and to use the first stone he mentions he says this is the foundation this is what everything is built on it means it has a spiritual meaning number one number two it's of great value to God because the foundation must always be more important than what is built on top is this making sense now <laughs> God ordains the high priest God ordained the high priest do you know what the high priest had to put on let's look at it we're going somewhere our religion will die today 
Exodus 28 from verse 15. Exodus 28 from verse 15. Exodus 28 from verse 15 to... And thou shalt, and thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment. Mm -hmm. After the work of the ephod, mm -hmm. thou shalt make it of mm -hmm. gold and of purple and of scarlet and of fine mm -hmm. shalt thou make. Four square it shall be doubled, mm -hmm. a span shall be the length thereof, and mm -hmm. a span shall be the breadth thereof. And thou shalt set in of the stone, even four rows of stone. The first row shall be a sardius, mm -hmm. a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. Mm -hmm. And the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligware, and a gate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a barrel, and an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their in And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve, according to their names of a signet. Every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. Now, God is putting the breastplate of judgment, meaning every time the priests put that on, they have the power to judge. They have the power to minister not only before God, but they have the power to judge. And on each stone, on each stone is engraved the names of the tribes. On each stone, God says, yeah, make sure you do it like that. That's what I want. God, do we need these stones? He says, yeah, make sure they have it. Make sure those who have the spirit of wisdom build it and they consecrate Aaron and his children and to me as priests so that they can minister to me. But their garments must have these things. Now, some witch comes out somewhere and tells you, oh, Jasper is a healing stone. Yeah, you put topaz, you charge it with the moon. And then you put it in your house and it will give you good vibes. It will drive out. Notice the purpose of the stones has been perverted. That you are even afraid to look at beautiful stones and put them in your house. Because now every time you look at crystals, you look at stones. Instead of seeing the foundations of heaven. <laughs> instead of seeing a reflection of heaven. Instead of having a piece of what is in heaven given to us on earth. You see demons. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You start looking at stones and you see demons. You start adoring stones who their duty is to declare God. Remember what Jesus said. If you do not praise me, even the stones will what? They are already praising him because they are a reflection of his world. Are you getting what I'm saying? All these things are from God. But when you are under the spell of witchcraft, and remember witchcraft is manipulation, everything becomes demonic. Do you realize angels called cherubim, they literally have precious stones built into them. If you look at the temple of Solomon, God told him, make sure when you put the cherubim, make sure you put these precious stones on them because that's how I created them. So if you're going to put them in the temple representing the mercy seat and all that good stuff, make sure that they're engraved with this precious stone. So when the devil makes you make an idol of gold, he just insulted you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When he makes you bow down to something that is the foundation of the city God created for you to live in, it's like you going and taking uh, uh, what you call the, what do you use to make roads? Gravel. G tam tamak? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Imagine taking that and you're worshiping it. Eh. Yet it's created for you to walk on. This stone, are, they are remembered, there's a whole, it is not crystal clear. It's called a crystal sea. We can't even imagine it. Now, and God has God has this precious metal. They should connect you more to him, not connect you away from him or think you can draw any power from them. Do they have power? Yes. Their only power is to point you to God, not to point you away from God. That is their purpose. When you take anointing oil. All right, uh, before... All right, uh, before we go into the anointing oil, the olive oil of a thing, um, I'd like you to see how much she struggled with all these things. And, uh, you know, very fluent anyway, not. And you see the, the exclamation of the people, and that is what makes me more emotional. And uh, I was wondering and thinking how much glorious it could have been for him to have. This is, this is a class, and he brings the teaching of salvation, how to receive Christ. And from there, you know, you know, leading them to Christ and telling them things about um, the sanctification that is necessary for every believer, for every child of God to experience and also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, because I sincerely believe that, um, you know, there is nothing more that points us to Christ, to God, other than Christ. There is nothing more that makes the presence of god real and authentic in us and that means that we can have this union and connection with god if not his spirit not a crystal not a precious stone not whatever that is created now you see how much he wants to link it with the bible now i want to ask you there are some of you who may have built you know houses and the at the foundation you buried iron rods you buried all kinds of you know stones in order to make the the foundation very solid now how often do you cut the piece of iron rod 
and you 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 put it up in your in your you know your sitting room and just for it to to connect it to whatever now we we know that god made all these things and for 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 clarity the quality of the precious stones in heaven cannot be said to be the same thing of that on earth now but we understand that when the lord jesus even was teaching us how to pray he said that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven now when, when moses was being instructed to build the tabernacle now he was told to be sure that he made every everything according to the samples that were shown to him when he came up you know at the mount now so who is the person that should be in the best position now to make use of precious stones because he saw them you know he saw them as it were in the heavenlies he was it was you know as it was shown him and he was saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that the craftsmen you know did make use of it according as it was shown to moses it should have been moses if if we are to make any special thing out of these objects Moses should have been the one that would have started and he should have been able to explain better than Lovey how precious and how wonderful this could be. But God used those things as an example, as an appearance of what, you know, his uh, um, his temple, his, his tabernacle, even the, the, the outlook of heaven and worship should be like. That would take us a very, you know, long time because in there we saw the, the outer court, the holy place and the holy of holies where the throne of the lord himself is and that's you know signifies the order of the assemblies of god all right now so precious stones are not so special as it has to do with the worship of god and things pointing us to god now look at it the the devil the one we call satan today lucifer had those things also embedded in him maybe you know he forgot that even though he made mention of um the 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 cherubs you know having that because he alluded to it because that was what what uh instruction that was given to moses when he was constructing the ark now let us look at the the ark and the tabernacle in ezekiel chapter 28 ezekiel chapter 28 let me read with uh, king james it says from verse 12 son of man take up a lamentation upon the king of tyros and say unto him thus says the lord god thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty that has been in eden the garden of god every precious stone was thy cover the sardius topaz and the diamond the beryl the onyx and the jasper the sapphire the emerald and the carbon coal and gold the workmanship of the tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created that are the anointed cherub that covereth and i have said this so thou wast upon the holy mountain of god thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee but a multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned therefore i will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of god and i will destroy the oak of covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness i will cast thee to the ground i will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee thou hast defied thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic now all, all i'm saying here is that if we are to revere these precious stones just because the bible made mention of it being part of the decorations of the temple part of the decorations of the gates in the new jerusalem part of the decorations of what he was referring to as the foundations of heaven if we are to pay so much attention to it that means that we should also begin to you know uh, tell lucifer you are still okay we can still and of course now the bible talks about perversion of wisdom now what he is teaching these people is perversion of wisdom perverted on you know no um knowledge perverted knowledge so my my question keeps going back to how will this help those people's spiritual life how will it make their relationship with christ because what he's doing now is that he is bringing in you know another middle object he says the point this thing points people to god now who else will point people to god if not christ so that means that the precious stones and the matters and you know the the the, the elements the firmaments all of them you know should come first 
maybe they will point you to Christ and then Christ to to you know to God. And that is African traditional religion that believes that there are these things, you know, that when they see anything that is so special, you know, that looks extraordinary, that looks like it has some form of supernatural appearance, they bring it and they, they keep it. And so they want it to be the one that will point them to the real God. So there is nothing so special. God knows his um you know his love for all these things and and when when you read you see that it is almost the same the same kind of stones that were on the devil that was deposed those are the things also that he commanded to be upon the priests or, or upon the, the you know the vests of the priest and you see we don't need all those things physically anymore spiritually the death of jesus christ restored us to the originality of what god wanted us to be in his presence and so when god looks at us he sees christ and christ is complete christ is so glorious and so beautiful and the bible says that he is the health of our countenance the bible says that when he shall appear we shall see him and we shall be like him so it, it, whenever god looks at, at us as kingdoms of priests we don't have to wear the robes of the the levitical priests with those precious stones on them for god to accept us for jesus is worth much more than most precious stone and whenever god looks on us he gets satisfied and that is why the bible calls us a kingdom of priests unto our god so we don't need any extra thing precious stones or what to be pointed to god do they have power yes their only power is to point you to god not to point you away from god that is their purpose when you take anointing oil oil has no power you know that it's just olive oil ah you can make a mint salad with it you can cook eggs with it all it does it's a good conductor of god's power that's why god chose it that's why he did not tell you use canola oil to anoint he didn't say use vegetable oil to anoint he said use olive use olives why is god telling you use olives because olives is a good conductor of the anointing do you understand as far as god is concerned the right thing to use to anoint yourself it's not because olives have power it's not because olive oil has power olive oil just conducts the power of god because that's what he made it for so when we're anointing people we take anointing oil called olive oil we put it on them and we pray for the sick they get healed we pray for the demon oppressed they get delivered it is just it is a good conductor but if you go to supermarkets right now olive there's virgin oil olive oil pure olive oil people are cooking with it and no one no demon is coming out of anyone because he has a dual purpose either either you eat the olives or make oil to cook with it and if you're spiritual you use it for spiritual purposes uh now the olive oil is not the good conductor of the power of god the olive oil, the, the oil is not a conductor of the power of God. The power of God is the Holy Spirit. The power of God is the finger of God and the finger of God is the Spirit of God. Jesus said, if I by the through the finger of God cast out devils, know you then that the kingdom of God has come upon you. And what we saw upon the Lamb of God was the seven spirit of God. The spirit of God that was upon Christ without measure. So the true conductor of the power of God is the spirit of God, not oil and the oil is symbolic listen when the disciples of christ were anointed with power there was no oil that was poured on them all that they had was the presence of the holy spirit and that is why you will hear many preachers telling you that oil is no longer that necessary anymore and and you cannot fault anybody who says that so this is a twist and that is why you know you see that there are some preachers who frown at those that use oil because there is so much so much you know misconception packed into it that people who don't have knowledge now they we, they will bath with oil in the morning and that is why some pastors will sell a bottle of olive oil for five thousand dollars now how much does it does it cost in the market now because people like this tells you know tell uh, uh, those that are not so wise when it comes to the things of God, the lies that they probably want to hear. So the olive oil is not the conductor of the power of God. The spirit of God is the power of God. And if you have the spirit of God in you and you believe in the ability of the spirit, you have the faith in Christ. You see, that is why it is also very, very necessary that you also begin to believe that the Lord can use you. For this signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall do all kinds of wonders and signs. Though it might take you time. It might take you, you know, building your, your capacity in God. It might take you a lot of sacrifices, denying yourself things. But that is the truth. 
if there is enough consecration, then you will know that the power of God lives in the inside of you. Apostle Paul never used olive oil, but he conducted power. I mean, he carried the power of God. Peter, there was no there was no record that he used oil anywhere to, to, to cast out demons or to anoint people. So the olive oil, the oil in the Bible symbolized, and that is why you see that whenever the prophet, you know, pours an oil upon the king, the king becomes the anointed of God because the spirit of God comes upon that king via the oil. Now, those things are the type the type of what we are to you know experience and see when the anti-type comes may the lord give you understanding in the name of jesus christ world capitalized 100%. and then we believe that it's demonic because we've neglected it not understood that god was greater exactly. than what it is so 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 we have considered so much the devil yes that we every time we allow those things to happen our freedom is going away yes your spiritual freedom is is, is leaving you remember there was a time i'm seeing a lot of women no yes. pants and <laughs> 50 years ago uh, you are a devil then we realized uh actually that doesn't make you less of a woman it's just comfortable you you, you get what i'm saying it's just comfortable imagine the bible of it. uh so before long V talks about his jasper of a thing. Now, so now you you heard him there that when you don't recognize these things, when you don't you recognize the potentials he's teaching you about these these things, that you lose your spiritual freedom. So if you don't if you don't recognize the potency of the oil, you don't recognize the potency of um um, um crystals. If you don't recognize the you know the potency of precious stones all of them now you lose your spiritual freedom and so I, I begin to wonder because jesus said that you shall know the truth not according to what lovey is telling you now not according to what is teaching you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and who is the truth now this truth is dualized the 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 truth the revelation of christ you have in the word of god gives you freedom not the revelation according to lovey the revelation about matters create you know uh, uh the created things the his the power he has noticed that are in the created things not that that gives you power for whosoever the son shall set free whosoever the son shall set free shall be free indeed is free indeed so freedom comes from christ not from oil not from precious stones not from not from rivers and waters and stars you remember we talked about stars and the moon the other time you know in part one of this video so those freedom freedom doesn't come from those things freedom comes from the son of god for whom the son shall set free shall be free indeed if the son of god sets you free your freedom is guaranteed you don't have to recourse to these things that he is mentioning in this video for you to have your freedom now let us listen to him tell you about you know uh crystals imagine the bible of heaven father i am the foundation let this stone represent in my house that my house is built on the foundation of notice the purpose is changed you are not worshipping the stone. You are not drawing any power from the stone. But you are using it to connect yourself to heaven. Saying, Lord, as the foundation of heaven is of this stone. As I decorate my house with this. Let the foundation of this house be Christ. Notice, now you have pointed the purpose of the stone to who it belongs to. But if you fall for this, uh, I'm not saying go and buy Jasper and do that. I am giving you understanding. So if you ever like any of these stones, God is not. Listen, me, I'm not a hypocrite. There's no in the Bible God said don't buy them. God doesn't want you to worship any idols. He doesn't want you to worship any stone. You are not to worship any of these things, but these things point you to the creator. He made them. How can God create some? It's like an example. Everyone looks at a snake and says a snake is the devil. And even God calls the, the devil a snake. But who made snake? God tells you be as wise as a what? When did you prefer the <laughs> You see how weird that sounds? It made you shocked. But God is saying, Father, today I pray, give me wisdom. You can't even pray like that because to you, snake is the devil. Yeah. Already your mind is, is going crazy. It is struggling to process. Now, now you, you see, see how, how soft tool he is. He, he has, has just, just told, told you what he wanted, wanted to tell you. What, what he, he thinks the, 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 you know, the crystal is. is. And, and how you can use it to connect heaven, how you can use it to, you know, be extraordinary. And eventually he tells you there is no power in it. Now, and he's not asking you to worship it. And he's not asking you to go and buy it. And at the same time, he's telling you, but there is no place in the Bible where the Bible says don't buy them. Now, so if he is not asking you to go and buy them, what of what essence is the teaching? If he's not encouraging you to get them and make that same prayer, he, he is asking you to pray. Now, of course, 
they don't grow in the bush. You you just got to go and get it and buy them, and they use it according to him to connect yourself to heaven. But then he turns around and tell him, I'm not saying worship them. I'm not saying go and buy them. I'm not saying go and buy them. But even the Bible has not said there's no place in the Bible that the Bible says don't buy them. Now does that not show you the you know the subtlety of of the serpent? You no, know, the other time I spoke in that video, I said, he has a tongue of a serpent. And because he appeals to people who who don't have who don't have the mind of their own when it comes to the truth of the gospel of Christ. All right? He appeals to them. And, you know, for him to appeal more, he brings in the issue of pants. Uh, you know, 50 years ago, if a, a woman is wearing pants, he's seen as a demon. But today, everybody. So, I mean, this is this is the nature of the serpent and listen to him as he talks about the serpents listen to him and see what he talks about satan i mean snake but isn't it interesting that the very things that the devil is so focused on should be the very things we're drawn to to figure out why did god put them here but those are the very things he's using to pull us away they how significant they must be to god that the devil wants exactly. to focus on them so much exactly yeah. And, and, and that is the point that I'm trying to make to you because you have to be free. You see, if you have no freedom, you're bound. You are extremely bound. And the only way you become free is by knowing the truth. Totally. You shall know the truth and the truth shall what? Make you free. So if you don't, you're not, you're not free because of prayer. God, I, I, listen, I can pray for you. You have demons free right now. But if you don't know the truth, tomorrow you'll be bound again. And the devil loves a bound believer. Ah, more than anything. <laughs> because the doctrines of what bound you is what you will use to preach. You see, I, I realized something and I was talking to, I think my little sister Benny and I was talking to her and I was telling her, do you realize most deliverance ministers, their doctrine of demonology actually came from demon. It didn't come from God. Paul is telling you, listen, if the devil gives you anything, it will have no effect. He said, I can go and eat food dedicated yes, to idols nothing. right now and nothing will happen to me. But I will not do that because if you see me, you will stumble. So people who have been bound with food, it's not because the power of witchcraft is strong. It's because you don't know the truth. Amen. The devil can only occupy where there is no truth. Is this making sense so far? So, so ask yourself, of this question what have i god is angry with the children of israel because they are hard-headed he allows snakes to bite them in the world people are dying moses goes and says lord i have my god says all right tell them cover a serpent make it of bronze or something and put it whoever looks at it will be healed until today the medical That's field the hospital the medical field knows the symbol of a snake means healing you if you dream of a snake the first thing is the devil attacked me instead of being calm enough to say mm, okay let me see if it is there anyone sick in my family right mm, god is bringing healing amen if there's no sick person you check your spirit you pray this one god is revealing to me there's a snake in my life fire are you understanding what i'm saying because the devil knows to pervert what comes from god yes you imagine the bible is telling you in genesis then chapter 3 of all the creatures god created no one was wiser than a serpent so the symbol of wisdom on earth is as i didn't say it your bible did well anyway um i think this is where i will stop and um you know, you know, the, the thing, thing is, is that it's not, it's not everybody that, that use, uses, uses the Bible is using the Bible for the reason why the Bible has been created. There are some occultic men who are running spirits, um, spiritual homes and they are using the Bible. So sometimes you get to their temple, you see the Bible, you see the cross, you see candles and you know the next thing that the person who brought you will tell you but of course he's using the bible too and if you're stupid enough to be taken by that you will be like well he's using the bible now so his last statement there and so his last statement there was that he didn't say it your bible said so but what did your bible say now the fact that that the bible says that the you know of all that god created nothing was as wise and as soft as subtle like the serpent subtlety is not actually um a very good quality but understand that satan corrupted everything that god made you know the moment he was able to get into eden and caused the f the fall of man now jesus himself said we should be as wise as serpents but as harmless as dove now the serpent is not a good thing there there is nowhere anyhow even the lord our god sees the serpent as evil every you know a kind of um, denoting of the this the serpent snake in the bible has nothing good about it
all right so now even the symbol of healing or this the the, the the hospital symbol the medical symbols that he was talking about now you see uh somebody may tell you that it was that which was done like he brought it in that it was uh you know that time in the in the wilderness when the children of israel offended god and he sent fairy serpents into the camp that beat them and they died and then he asked moses to build you know that kind of a snake and put it on a stake and whosoever shall look upon that snake that the hanging uh, uh recovered the person shall be healed from the the snake bite now that again happens to be the type of christ and jesus said that just as moses who you know lifted up the serpent in the wilderness that whosoever if the son of man shall be lifted up whosoever shall look upon the son of man you know shall be saved and he you know let me put it in the right way and if i be lifted up i shall draw all men unto myself i shall draw men unto myself now but that is not actually the meaning the interpretation of the medical logo that you see on hospital signpost now, people may deceive you to tell you that listen the world is enmeshed in darkness and the devil is seriously messing up with the system of the world the bible calls him the god of this world and so and so when when he is the, the god of this world he brings in system remember we are not of this world though we are in the world we are not of this world we are strangers in the world so the system of the world is enmeshed in the ideas of the god of this world even the lord jesus said you know <laughs> towards his end of, uh, you know on earth he said that the prince of this world cometh but he has nothing in me so the the thing is that we are living in this world but we are to work hard enough so that when the devil comes he will have nothing of his in us now i tell you the origin of that symbol is not is not that thing that happened in the bible the staff with the snake has long been a symbol of medicine and the medical profession it originates from the story of as uh Asclepius, who was reversed by the ancient Greeks as a god of healing and whose cult involved the use of snakes. So that thing you see is a symbol of a cult that believe in a particular demon as that has you know powers of healing and it is snake. So now Glovi is telling you that the symbol of healing is snake. So when you dream about snake in you know at night, you don't have to think about it twice. It might be it it, it might be that uh, that God is telling you that there is sickness in your body or there is a healing and all that. I mean snake snake is not a good thing and he ended up telling you he didn't say so but your bible tells you so that snake is the the icon of wisdom no the icon of wisdom the symbol of wisdom is not snake the symbol of wisdom is the holy spirit of god the 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 source of wisdom is the spirit of the living god it's not the snake now at the end of it all all i am trying to achieve is that please know who you listen to please don't just swallow everything you hear from people no matter how you may like them i don't hate them either i don't hate him i have nothing personal against him i'm not running a church so it's not as if we are competing for for customers because that is what that is what it looks like it's not as if majority of them are not in there for souls they are in there for customers so we are not we are not we are not fighting for customers but all i'm looking at is what is the essence of this this congregation that gathered it came all the way from the u.s to london to teach them occultism i really do not understand i don't know the essence of it if it is not to mislead the people and make them to wise worse the sons of darkness that they were before he came some of them even who had some kind of light in them would end up would have ended up being confused about what he was teaching them because at the end of the day he would tell them i didn't say go and buy it but the bible did not say you should not go and buy it so what what is 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 it uh, you know what, what has he ended up telling them it's like you are talking to somebody about sex and that the sex should be between a, a husband and a wife and then he, you ended up telling them okay you, that's uh, as a sexual union is good but i'm not asking you to go and have sex but at the same time there is no place the bible said you should not have sex remember he has not told you go and commit fornication but indirectly that is what he's, he's telling you he didn't say so but when you bring out people and you, you you hang them like that you have told them what you want to tell them and now you are now a kind of 
becoming cautious so that those who don't know would understand where you are going and those who know who would who would question you at the end of the day would be like but well he didn't say and those who are wise know that that is what he said he has introduced them to to objects to precious stones to crystals so go and get it and use it and connect yourself to god what happens to christ if we were to use this subject to connect ourselves to god what happens to christ let that be the question you should ask yourself remind you that there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved except the name of jesus christ and jesus himself boldly said i am the way the truth and the life nobody comes to the father but by me if you listen to this kind of teachings and you begin to practice what they are teaching you you are practicing occultism and at the end of the day it will take you to hellfire but the lord give you precious understanding in the name of jesus christ i'll be seeing you in the next video till then i want to ask you to put down your comments in the comment section share the video like it if it truly blesses you and and, you know um give us your support whichever way you want to sharing the video is one of the support putting down your comment is one of the support and using the super stickers the super thanks and what have you joining the channel membership is part of the support god bless you see you then in the next video till then from me to you shalom